This is Tanner Steed. We're out here at Lake Dillon, uh, just outside of Frisco, Colorado. I'm, I'm painting this awesome scene of the lake, and today we're gonna be working primarily on water and reflections. And I'm gonna give you a few tips that hopefully will help you when you get out there in the field and you encounter a body of water. Tip number one, reflections are always the same height as the thing that they are being cast. So think of it as a mirror. So when I drew out the shapes, um, I'm primarily looking at the island out there. The top of the island has a middle, right? Think of it in terms of like a symmetrical butterfly laid on its side. You can take just your fingers or even a paintbrush to measure the exact height that you've made that shape. And I like to draw things out to make sure that I've got the proportions fairly accurate um, starting out. and. What you've seen here is I've actually worked the background down into this shape a little bit. The shape ends right here. That's where the top of my trees are. Another tip for painting outside with efficiency is working back to front. And that way you're just layering paint on top of it rather than painting the holes in, bet in between trees, I've already established what is behind the tree. So it's as if I'm placing each thing in the landscape in front of one another. All right, so not only are the reflections the same proportion, they're a mirror image, but when I'm painting them, I'll actually take this shadow color. So I'll take the shadow color here and immediately paint it down below, right beneath it. So I'm aware of each tree that I'm painting and the associated shadow. Typically I work pretty fast just laying this in nice and quick. And I'm also thinking of that back to front idea too, because everything that's above is also below. And you can actually see here, I've made a circle indicating the entirety of a bush structure with a line dividing it down the middle. So each tree will have a light and a dark as well as the reflection. And what I'll do is I'll just lay everything in all at once and the values at this stage are the same. Tip number three, when you lay everything in, you're going to want to knock everything back. And by knocking things back and using a fan brush, I'm going to be blending the colors slightly, uh, what I like to refer to as milking up my darks, as in there's going to be white and stuff getting into these darks. Uh, and that will lighten the value, which is actually more accurate to nature than keeping them the same value. That tip is your darks become lighter in the reflection and your lights become just a hair darker in the reflection. It's very subtle. Don't over exaggerate it, otherwise it won't look real, but that is very important for realism. Now tip number four is soft edges. You need to have soft edges in the water to make it look like it's refracted light and the water is just slightly shifting. And it's important to do each tree on its own because you may have color variation in the tree above and you need that same color var variation below. So there's no rush, take your time. You're designing a painting, not taking a photo and copying the scene. So the reflection is obviously not just 
the trees. We're going to be working on both the distant mountain out there uh, and also definitely the gradation in the sky. So first I'm going to work on the mountain. I'm going to go up here and I'm just going to test a color and see how accurate my mixture is on the palette. Okay, it's pretty darn close. So I'm going to take that same mixture that I just put on the mountain, that was me checking, and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to start painting in this general region that is not going to be detailed at all. And I'm going to just paint in that color note. And then I'm going to work pretty quickly. I'm going to take my fan brush and slap that around to blend it. Mix it in with the tree next to it and knock it up into that bush. Just make everything nice and soft. I like to make everything really soft and then come in and make detailed sharp marks because you can have a million soft edges but you need to be careful on where you place your hard edges because the hard edges are where people are going to look. So now I'm going to move on to the gradation. I have it going from much darker up here and it gets lighter as it goes to the left. So I need to do the opposite down here as in the reflection, right? So light to dark. Okay, but I'm going to start with my darks first and move this way just for fun. Not for any particular reason. So I'm using ultramarine blue, a little bit of ivory black to desaturate. I'm using some king's blue to bring it up in value. And I want to test this in the sky too, because it looks pretty purple. It might be too purple. Yep, too purple. I'm going to make a new mixture next to the one I had before. And I'm going to add more blue. I'm also going to lighten it. It's too dark too purple. That's the one. I just want it to be similar. That's what's important. And actually, I may use some of that dark mixture because like I said a moment ago, your lights get a little bit darker in the reflection and your darks get a little bit lighter. So I'm going to start in this corner. Nice and loose. Just scrub that in real quick. Like that. Then I'm going to want to start getting much lighter because I need my mountain shape to show up too. So I'm going to go next to this and quickly mix up something else with more titanium white to lighten it. A bit more king's blue and I'm going to add a touch of yellow because we're in the morning light. The morning light is warm. So I may even come up here and define that mountain shape a little bit. And then I'm going to lose that shape. I'm going to add the clouds on top of that. I'm going to knock it down first and go side to side. And some of this is going to turn into the highlights on the trees. And this is what I mean by milking up your blacks. The white is getting into the darks in this mixture and it's lightening it. So I'm simultaneously mixing on the canvas. So when you're painting from life, the scene is going to change constantly. So right now, I'm working all based on the theory that I've been teaching you in this. Uh, just using those tips to complete the painting because if you look out there, there is no reflection now. But with these rules, I can create a picture that looks realistic, even if that isn't happening out there. So what I've done is I've created soft edges throughout. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back in my dark mixtures and I'm going to cut in only to the stuff above the reflection, the actual tree, and create some hard edges. And that is just going to create a much more realistic looking 
picture because the hard edges will be up here and you'll have soft edges down here. Um, and now I'm looking up here and asking, what's the difference? Oh, I haven't added my clouds. So the sky is behind the clouds, right? We're working back to front. So I've established the gradation of, of the sky. Now we're gonna bring in some of these light notes of the clouds. So I'm gonna use titanium white. And clouds are so bright that I'm not just going to use pure titanium white, but it's gonna be pretty darn close to that. I'm gonna add just a touch just a touch of yellow, that's cad yellow pale, and then a touch of this uh, pale rose blush, which is kind of a red, a neutralized red. And it's literally just a touch. The camera probably can't pick up on it. Now I'm gonna look up here and compare my shapes. I've got it going up and over the mountain a little bit, and it's going up to the right. So I'm gonna start nice and light and it's gonna be a hard edge at first. But then we'll change that. And then I'm gonna go back up into the sky and make my edges harder in the sky. And I don't need to create the exact shape above because remember the ripples will distort what's happening, but I do need the color note. I may even make some stuff up to increase the contrast of this reflection. I'm gonna put some white behind it, even though there isn't that much up here. Knock down the brush strokes. Going straight down, knocking a little bit behind these. And I can start to draw out tree shapes. Some sky holes in the reflection some clouds over here. Okay, now I'm gonna soften these edges very carefully. I'm gonna go side to side. It's a very soft brush. I go up and down a little bit. And what I'm doing is just not only softening the edges but knocking down the ridge lines because I don't want these highlights to pop out more than the clouds above because it's a reflection. All right, so since we're working back to front, I'm gonna be working on the ripples that are happening over the shadows. Just vary these edges a little bit. And then I'm going to soften these. Less is more. And they need to track together because they're always from a source. So I'm thinking of something bouncing these waves towards here, so they're all, all gonna radiate over there. Well, thank you for watching. I hope these tips help you in your artistic journey. I've used these tips countless times and they really do work if you follow uh, exactly as I prescribed. But I will say, this is not the only way to paint water. This is just the way that I've learned and started to develop, and I've heard these tips from different artists. So if you have other tips, please comment down below. D is there something I missed that uh, you find is excellent for painting reflections or maybe the anatomy of a wave? Comment down below, I'd love to hear. Uh, I'd like to start building an, art an artist community. You make sure to subscribe. Well, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.